Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for our consideration today comes from our Gospel, Luke chapter 13, beginning with the 22nd verse. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, back in 2008, there was a new game show to hit the American Airways. If you don't remember it, that's okay. Either A, you might not have been old enough to remember it, or B, it lasted less than a year. There's a game show called Hole in the Wall. Remember that one? There was a wall that a contestant would stand 50 feet from on a platform, and then they had this time where the wall would move towards them and there would be a cutout. They had to position themselves to fit through the cutout, and if they weren't positioned just right, the wall would sweep them off the platform and into the water below. Looks something like this. I don't know you or where you come from. 
away from me, you evildoers. You know, as Jesus preached in Israel, there were plenty of people who knew him. They were very familiar with him. This is the preacher, the prophet from Nazareth. But the whole idea of being familiar, that familiarity, that's not faith. That's not the same thing as knowing about somebody and actually putting your trust in somebody. People of Israel could have told you plenty about Jesus, but because that faith in him was not there, the familiarity didn't come for you. Even though they said, we've seen you before, you've taught in our streets, we know all about you. But that lack of faith is there. There's an emptiness in their heart where he needed to fill. And to add insult to injury, look at what happens. There will be weeping there, gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. They would see something remarkable happen. They would see all of these Old Testament believers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all these prophets, they are a part of this festivity. Jesus just makes it very real for them. But you yourselves thrown up. He doesn't pull any punches here, does he? He says, there are people in this crowd that are following me, that are hanging on my every word, that are not believers. There are people here who are following me for because it's fashionable, to satisfy their curiosity, because I got nothing better to do on this particular day, but whatever their reason be, there's not faith there. He says, and you yourselves will find yourselves thrown out. Back in 2017, there was a flight bound for Seattle. And as that flight was being boarded, a woman got on board and sat down next to a gentleman with her husband. And she started laying into this guy. Not her husband, the other gentleman. Because she quickly found out that this man's political beliefs did not match up with her own. And so she began insulting him, telling him how he, she hoped she could have something to drink to throw up all over him, saying he was just this most despicable human being there ever was. She started getting louder, being disruptive. Finally, the flight attendants came over and said, you know, you really need to pipe down a little bit, otherwise we're going to have to remove it. And she continued. Pretty soon, word came from the captain, she's gone. Time to remove this woman from the flight because of her disruption. But that's when you see her belligerent attitude change. Suddenly it was, oh, I, okay, I'm sorry. I'll keep quiet. I'll play nicely. You can maybe just move us somewhere else so that I don't have to sit next to this person. Can't you show some respect? My husband here just lost his mother and we're now on our way home. But that attitude changed. It was too late. She had made her decision. She, the flight was open for her to fly and go across country, but she chose Religion. And so the sheriff's department came and escorted this woman and her husband off the flight to the cheers of the rest of the passengers. Do you ever find yourself kind of acting disruptive and belligerent? Not on a flight, but in your attitude towards God. Do we have this attitude that says, you know what, I, I have my rights and it's all about me so I can say what I want to say, and if you hurt me, are hurt because of it. I'm sorry you're such a snowflake and can't take my harsh criticism, but what I say is the truth. Do we ever look at our actions and go, you know what? They're not so bad. It's, it's my little vice. Whether it's laziness, lovelessness, whether it's my addiction to pills or pornography, whether it is my abusive behavior, or abdicating my responsibility. That's just my little problem, but it's not that big a deal. Or 
we ever look at our own righteousness and say, look at how God must love me. Because of all that I bring to the table for Him, because of all of my work that I do for Him, because of my great faith, He must really be proving of me. Like that dog trying to go through the pain of blood. Those are giant sticks in our mouths that keep us out of the narrow door of heaven. Because the problem is, the moment we try to bring anything, to say, this is part of my goodness. This is part of who I am, and so God should love me for it. The moment I say, I want to hold on to my sinful vices, that just adds a few more inches around the waistline and keeps me out of the narrow door. You see, it's not that everybody isn't in the it's because we are. The problem is, the moment we try to bring more baggage with us, the more we try to bring anything except being streamlined and sleek the way Jesus has made us to be, that's what gets us stuck from going through the narrow door. The door is there. But you have to remember, the door is also open. Even though we show this belligerent attitude at times, even though we are disruptive at times, It's narrow, yes, but it stands open, ready to welcome all through its portal. Now Jesus says, people will come from the east, the west, the north, the south, and will take their places at the feast of the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first, and first who will be last. You talk about a feast of epic international proportions. People from east and west and north and south are going to be in attendance. This is what this celebration in this kingdom is going to be. No tribe or language of people is going to be excluded. But something has to be the same for all of them. You know, we come in various different sizes and shapes and body types, but he says there's one measurement for all of those who enter through the narrow door, that must be the same. They must fit. They must be able to fit through the door in order to enter the kingdom of God. And what is it that makes a person fit to enter the kingdom of God? It's being absent of hanging on to unrepentant sin. It's being absent of that own self-merit saying, I can do this on my own. It's being absent of this sinful pride that says, I don't need Jesus or his salvation. That means being covered in his perfection. You see, in order for a person to fit into this kingdom, God has to see that person covered in Jesus. Covered from head to toe with his perfection. God has to see that person with something very important placed squarely in his heart. How your heart must be filled. Faith that Jesus came to be your Savior. Faith that Jesus is the only source of salvation. Faith that Jesus covers you with his perfection. Faith that Jesus isn't going to count a single sin against you. Faith that heaven is now open for you and for me. Because the moment a person has that faith in Jesus as the sole source of salvation, the moment that our hearts are not divided amongst other things, but united and filled solely with love for Him. Jesus says, the door is wide open, and you can enter into my kingdom. You know, we come in different shapes and sizes, but one thing has to be the same. We have to be covered with Christ. Now you look at what Jesus says to us today. He says, make every effort to enter the kingdom of God. That's not putting it on you in order to be into heaven. But he says, you have been touched by the gospel. You have heard the gospel. You have that faith in your heart. The only thing that can get in your way is you. It's taking that time that God has given you to be in his word 
in becoming distracted from that. To despise the word that he has given you and say, you know what, I really don't need it anymore because now I have it. The only thing that can get in your way is to start entertaining those sins that God says is an offense to him, is a, is a belligerent view of his word. Of saying, you know what, I can dabble in these things and I'll be okay. The only thing that can stymie your way into that through that narrow door is you. So take the opportunity. Take the opportunity to confess your faith. Take the opportunity to allow that Holy Spirit to continue to build in you so that you can grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Continue to be in that word and surround yourselves with Christian friends to build you up when life tries to pull you down. Continue to surround yourself by fellow Christians who are making their way through that narrow door with you. Because all are invited, and many won't make it through. Not because what God has done is insufficient, as we heard in our second lesson today. No, it is very much sufficient for salvation. Make the effort. Having heard the word of God, make the effort to continue to hear that word of God and be strengthened. Because the fact is, Jesus wants to see you on the other side. Amen. Please stay. Now the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds with faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join together in singing the Te Deum. Holy God, we praise.